Okay, this is graphical misrepresentations of data. Now, the first one here. Um, this one shows burglaries in the U.S. Uh, to, for 2009 and um, indicates that uh, from July to August, uh, that was 18% of your data. And then other months is 8.2%. Uh, well, what that's not really indicating to you is that it does not mean the other months is total adds up to 8.2 percent it's indicate every every other month is 8.2 percent like if we look at the real data over here in the right hand side um, you see all the other months except for july and august uh, roughly are 8.2 percent averages to that but during july and august um, those added together give you 18 percent so a truer picture, if you look at this over here, would show that they're pretty much roughly the same all the way across. Now July and August are a little bit bigger. Now a company might try to portray this so that they um, try to get extra business during the summertime, indicating, hey, these are the these are real dangerous months, and and let's put in the home security system for you or something like that. Now um, over on the left hand side, this is a opinion uh, regarding the. Uh, Terry Schiavo case? I'm probably not saying that right. <laughs> um, but uh, you see Democrats 62%, Republicans 54%, and Independents 54%. And they, um, this is whether they agree with that. Um, now it looks like the Democrats are way up there high. But actually, you see that the Republicans and Independents are down there at 54%. Uh, and this is oftentimes the way you see... Um, see it represented is they'll go with the lowest amount and that's kind of where they put the vertical axis um, starting amount maybe one below that see how this starts at 53 when actuality if we started at zero you see on the right hand side uh, the bar graphs look pretty much roughly the same so um, graphs can be very misleading by by taking that vertical scale and doing numerous things with it now sometimes it's deliberate and sometimes it's unintentional uh, you don't mean to do that it just comes out Now here, this is another example of manipulating a vertical scale. Uh, this shows the average SAT math scores over time. And um, you can see back in 1991 it's 500. And 2009 it's 515. If you look at this height of the bar graph, it looks like it's like one, two, three. It's increased fourfold. Um, but actually it hasn't. If you put the um, vertical scale where the the lowest score 200 is on there then you see a one on the right they're pretty much roughly the same going across so it's not that big of an increase as it would appear now here's one uh, they, they like to pick on USA Today on this um, but they um, they oftentimes have misleading graphs uh, that shows a soccer ball in 1991 and then one in 2007 and it the soccer ball that soccer ball represents the number of participants it says in 1991 there are approximately 10 million participants in the United States, aged 7 years or older. By 2007, this had climbed to 14 million. Well, from 10 million to 14 million, that's a that's a significant increase. But if you look at the ball size, it looks like it's maybe four or five times as big. Well, um, 10 million hasn't grown four or five times, um, so it's misleading. This is one I had never really thought of before. Um, interesting one the, that uh, Sullivan points out in his book. Um, they had active duty personnel on both of these. Both of these represent the same data. But if you look over the one on the left, it's in 3D. Looks really cool. You know, a nice graph. But if I look at the Coast Guard and I try to eyeball it and go over to see where it matches up number wise, I really can't. You know, maybe it looks like a uh, hundred. Um, you know if I went straight over but really it's not now if I put it in a two-dimensional uh, graph you can see I can see the Coast Guard I can go straight over and it pretty well tell what it's what it's doing um, so try to keep things simple if you're trying to pe for people to actually see the numbers then it's best to show a 2d graph now if you're trying to um, not do the numbers maybe try to get them to be wowed by your presentation maybe the one on the left is the one you want misleading graphs. I'll never, um, never forget 
when I was working up a Coke um, industry, the KLCH, we um, programming on a Unisys mainframe, and my buddy was programming on a IBM mainframe, and he came up with some nice graphs. And um, took him a while to do it. Uh, it wasn't that easy back then. It wasn't like Excel where you have five seconds later you have a graph, but you had to do a lot of programming to get it. And um, he had a graph, like, maybe something looked like this, represent sales. And he showed it to our head of our department. He said, hey, look at this. You can't do this on your, your mainframe. And um, <laughs> that sounds real weird now. but um, And uh, I remember the head of our department said, I'll tell you what, you give him that graph, and uh, let's say this went out to 500, whatever 500 was to represent. And this was to go up here to um, 100. And he says, you go, give him that same graph, leave, uh, leave the vertical scale as is, move that 500 over to here. Now all of a sudden your data is going to look like this, your graph. Um, and you give them both those graphs. And they'll love one and they'll hate the other. They'll say, this doesn't really represent what's going on. This is actually the same data. And he was right. <laughs> I mean, my friend didn't go over there and show it to him, but he was right. Because, um, you, can, you can really mess with things and make it look good. This over here may show that sales isn't very good. But if I scoot in this axis here, to put 500 here, all of a sudden my sales are going up a real uh, lot. So you're sitting there, boy, that's, that's a fantastic increase. And a lot of people don't understand that. So part of statistics is to um, get you to think about what the graph represents. And, and um, sometimes we can't wrap our mind around the real data because there's so much. So we have to understand graphs. And that's the end of that section. So let me find a recorder. Stop both of them. Okay.